there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop, and today I'm going to show you how to create an email signature image. So if you're not sure what that is, basically it's a picture that displays at the bottom of every email that you send. So this is mine, it's got a picture of me, and then it's got my signature there. So I'm going to show you today how I put this together. So um, this is the file I already have done, so I'm going to open a new one to show you. Oops. Okay, so we're going to go to File, New, and this will pull up... Um, basically a blank document and you can put your own dimensions in here or you can just choose one that's already set up here for you um, I'm just gonna click this one seven by five um, you can always crop it later so I'm just gonna hit create and this is to start out with this is gonna be way too big to put into your email signature but I always like to start out with a higher resolution file just in case I ever need it um, to be a higher resolution for something else later um, so basically you can always resize and crop down but if you ever needed it to be a large file and you started out with something small then it might look a little funny so that's why I just start out with a big file and then I can crop or resize down from there later okay so um, this is what we what we're working with so far I have my picture of myself that I want to use gosh that's large okay so I'm gonna grab my move tool and I'm just gonna click right on the center of this image and then just drag it over to my new document and I'm not gonna let go until I'm hovered over this document okay so there is that and I'm just gonna center I mean we'll put it off center over here and I wanted mine to be a circle so I'm going to show you how I would do that there's a tool in here called the ellipse tool and if you um, yours might not look like this right away. You might have to right click on it. Um, and, you know, if it's the rectangle tool or the rounded rectangle tool, any one of these, if it shows up in your tool panel, this is where you'll find the ellipse tool as well. So if you see any of these, just right click on it um, in your tool panel, and then this flyout menu will pop out. And then just select the ellipse tool. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to click and drag to create a circle, pretty much like this. Um, this will stretch and you know make ovals and things like that so what you want to do is you want to hold I hit the delete key by the way to get rid of that um, so what you want to do is just hit the shift key on your keyboard and that will make a perfect circle as you drag so just make it as as large or as small as you'd like and then let it go okay so what you're gonna want to do first is over here in your layers panel click the ellipse layer and drag it below your image layer um, it doesn't really matter right now, but it's going to matter in just a second. So what we're going to do here is grab your move tool again and then move this ellipse wherever you want it. Here I've kind of placed it behind the image. Um, so what I'm going to do here is select your image layer again. It should be nearly above your circle by now. So what you're going to want to do is right click on that and hit create clipping mask. And this will tell that image layer that you want it to only show basically where this layer below it is showing. So basically you only want this image to apply inside the circle that's down here. And honestly you can do this with any shape if you wanted it to be a square or you wanted it to be um, a custom shape. If you right click on here there's a custom shape tool. So you could get really crazy in there, um, create lots of different shapes if you wanted um, and see which one you like the best. So for this I'm going to use a circle. Um, so what you want to do after you've clipped your image to your shape is grab your move tool again and just frame this in here how you want it and you may notice that it gets cut off over there so just fit it in here as best as you can um, center it how you want it pull it down um, yes just get it in there um, what you can do from here is you can go to edit free transform and then you can resize this in here just hold down shift or click this little link up here to hold your dimensions so your image doesn't look squished but basically then just drag it to fill the window and then place it where you want it once you've got it all aligned perfectly how you, how you like it then just hit the check mark and it'll be done okay so here what I wanted to do is I wanted to if you look at my other one I, it has a um, border around it so I wanted the border color to match the text of my name so here that's what we're gonna do next so what we're going to do is, so we don't have to try to create another ellipse, I'm just going to duplicate this one. So I'm just going to come down here and drag it over that little sheet of paper icon, and this duplicates it. Actually, I should have done that first because it just got rid of my clipping layer. Don't worry. Don't freak out. We're just going to drag this copy ellipse above your image. 
a thousand steps, I know, I'm sorry. Okay, click your image layer again, right click and hit create clipping mask and this will pop that one back down there. Okay, if you're still with me, click your ellipse copy layer and then you're gonna select your ellipse tool and we're gonna change the settings in here. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna come up here along the top bar and where it says fill, you're gonna click that and you're gonna select this little option over here where it's a white box with a red line through it. Basically that means you don't wanna fill it with any color. So now you'll see it's empty, okay? The next option over here we're gonna click is called stroke. Just click that image and that one will pop up. Right now we have it set to no stroke. And basically stroke just means the border around the shape that you've created. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose my recently used color, which is the gray that I want. I'm just gonna click it and then it pops up. And of course, because I'm showing you this, it's messed up and it's got um, a design in here instead of a regular border. Um, so what you'll do is you'll come over here to this dotted line section and you'll just choose a solid line. If you like the dotted line look, you can choose one of these other options um, and get really fun with that. I wanted the solid line look, so I chose that one. Now, if your stroke is not as thick as mine is, or maybe it's thicker and it looks really weird, that's when you'll come right here to where it um, gives you the weight of the line. And you can either drag this or you can type it in um, to, to get it perfect where you want it. I basically wanted my border to be the same thickness as the text that I used. Um, so here, this is the text, and these are my text files here. So I'm just going to drag these over this time to save some time. But what you'll want to do, I'm going to show you in just a second, I'm just dragging and dropping this right here. And then you can go to edit, free transform, and make this a little bigger. So what you would do if you don't already have these text files is, I'm going to turn these off for now, just hitting the little eyeball on each of those layers to turn them off. So what you'll do is you'll come here to this text tool and you'll click it and you will choose the text that you want. So here, my text for my name is called Always In My Heart and I'm pretty sure uh, that I found these on dafont.com, D-A-F-O-N-T.com. Um, and then the A I created with um, another font that was called MTF Heart Doodle. And that one is basically, I just typed in the letter A and it created a heart. I'm getting really long-winded here, I'm sorry guys. Okay, so basically, chose my text tool, and then the font is the MTF Heart Doodle, so all I have to do is hit the letter A on my keyboard, and it creates the heart that I used for my name, for my signature, I'm sorry. So um, there's that one, and so what you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the text tool again, or just click anywhere else on the image, and then you're going to change the font, and here, I've got like a thousand, so you might see some stuff in here. Um, so I'm gonna type in always in my heart, because I know that that's the one that I used for my signature. Um, now, if you wanted to get really personal with this, you could sign your name with a Sharpie on a piece of paper and like scan it in um, and pull your actual signature into Photoshop. Um, I've done that before and I'm always really critical with my own signature, so I never really like it as much. Um, so I used a, a font that kind of looks like how I sign my name when I'm being really neat. Um, so basically then just type your name and here it will put it in there. There is some spacing issues here. Of course there is, because I'm showing a tutorial. So I'm just gonna double click this, and then you'll hit this little file tab looking button up here. That's the technical name for it, guys. Um, so I'm just gonna undo the bold, and that makes it look better. So, done with that. Here, you can stretch your text, you can make it really tall. I'm gonna put this back to 100%. Um, maybe I'm lying, maybe I'm gonna put it back at 135. Basically, if you, you can, tweak these fonts to make them how you like them. This one over here stretches it widthwise. So if you wanted it to look a little wider, you could do that. Um, this one again is the height, so you could, I'm, I highlighted this and then I'm using the little wheel on my mouse to, to change this, by the way. So just make it look how you want it. Um, here you'll select the color that you want and you can just, you can click right on the color of the border to make sure it's the same. Um, Feel like I'm getting carried away here. Okay, so just put that where you want it and then grab your little heart if you have one. There you go. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my control. If you're on a Mac, that will be your command button. So I'm gonna hold that down and select both of those layers. My little A, which is my heart and my name. And then I'm gonna hit control or command G on my keyboard to put those in a group. And basically what that does is it just holds those together so that I can go to edit 
free transform and then I can spin this a little. If you want to put it on an angle, you can. If you want to make it bigger, you can. Just remember to hold that shift button or hit this little link um, button up here to keep those dimensions the same. And basically that just means, you know, it won't get squished like that. So hold shift and it'll pop back into proportion. And then when you're done, you're, you're going to want to save it. So that's what I'm going to show you here is when you save this file to put in your email signature, you're gonna want it to be a transparent file. So here you can see we've got a white background and we want to get it to be that transparent checkerboard that we see over here. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to use this um, elliptical marquee tool right here and basically just select around the signature, um, it, just a rough selection here, and I'm gonna hit image crop. And that's just gonna give me that rectangular um, document that I want. And then I'm going to slide, I'm going to come down here in my layers panel, go all the way to the bottom with your background layer, and you're going to want to turn this off. And once you turn it off, you'll see that there's no background anymore, so it shows up with that little checkerboard. And from there, you can go to File, Save As, and you can save this. You want to save as type. First, you might want to save it as a Photoshop file. That way, if you ever want to come back in, you've got all of those layers saved. Um, after that, you're going to want to come in here and select PNG, and that will maintain the transparency of the file. So then you're just going to call it whatever you want, Morgan Signature. I've got like a thousand of those files, as you can see, and then save it. I'm not going to because I already have one, uh, but you'll want to save it from there. And then you can drag and drop this into your email signature area. Um, in whatever program you use, whether you use Gmail or Outlook or Yahoo, whatever you want. So um, I hope you enjoyed this very long-winded tutorial. If you have any questions um, or you get stuck anywhere and you need some help, just send me an email at morgan at morganburks.com or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash morganburksphotography. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Have a great day.